Well, thanks guys for talking with me. Um, saw the movie last night. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, Andrew, what was the initial idea for this film? Um, I think it was two kids somewhere, and I don't know, that was sort of the spark, and um, two sort of unique kids, and I don't know what they were when it first started, but yeah. they certainly became, you know, what they are now. But there was a much weirder script that was written a long time ago where it was, I was, I've been saying this all day, but they were sort of inspired by feral children, and I was reading a lot about, about feral children, and it was a weird, weird movie at one point, and it still is, and not, it's not a How much weirder can yeah. be? They were like, they were, they were like naked all the time. Oh, it was like a very, that, that might very, have been a problem. Yeah. But, well, it's been done. That. It's been done, though. Yeah, yeah. One of the grand had, had done it, and done it tastefully, but, um, so yeah, that was sort of the spark, and, and also, I was living in Missouri, and, um, around a lot of Amish and Mennonite, and you know, my cousin works with them, and um, I just was really, really fascinated with the way they were living, and, and created these communities that are, you know, a part of America, but obviously separate, and, you yeah. know, they've created their own little insular, you know, way of life. So what was, what, at what point what, did you decide to do that supernatural element, rather than it just being they're behind a wall and they live on their own. Early, I think early, and, and it was something that I, I, you know, I like, um, I like populist films. I like comic book movies, and I like, um, you know, I like those kinds of films. But often they, they neglect character to me, and they neglect real drama. And um, and that was sort of the thing I really wanted to work with in this film. It's like give, give an audience something like power, but also give them something deeper and give them something to really chew on and, um, and hopefully we achieve that with this film. Elizabeth, you actually play Elizabeth uh, in the film, which might be nice. <laughs> um, how did you become attached to the film and maybe what was your first reaction reading the screenplay? Uh, you know, I saw Andrew's first film that he made, this documentary called Rich Hill, mm -hmm. that is just mind-blowing. Uh, and cinematic and just devastating and I, I it's just sort of a no-brainer when yeah. you see someone who's clearly has such vision and, and control and, and heart and that's really those are how cho it's just you know it's not even a choice then you just you just have to go do it yeah um, and I thought I love the idea I thought it was fascinating the idea of being isolated in the woods and what that would do to you as a as a family and how do you that and just the psychological, yeah, you know, whatever that that life that lifestyle would do to you. Well, how did you prepare for your role at, 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 with all the seizures and all that stuff? Oh. I mean, I watched <laughs> that looked so pretty much bad. Seizure, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I watched so much seizure footage, uh, a lot of it that Andrew showed me, and a lot that I found myself online and uh, and read about it and and watching it. It's just really very scary and sad to, to see the reality of it and we he pushed me to <laughs> do it so many times and so many else he found the specificity of each one which I would never been able to do and I always get worried about that kind of stuff in movies because it can get glossed over and like yeah. just do something crazy in the corner you know <laughs> yeah. and Andrew was like no, no no we're gonna and so each one was very specific and, and got worse and uh, that stuff was, was just really really scary um, can you talk about how you interacted with the two young actors that, that played your children? Yeah, you know, I'm always, whenever I meet young people, I just always want to be careful to not, you know, talk to them like they're kids or children, because I know that they hate that. So <laughs> I just try and play it cool <laughs> and not, not seem like a loser, yeah. you know? Um, that's my number one goal. Timo, Timo and Karen are a lot cooler than us. I have a lot cooler than me. I don't no, wanna, absolutely. I don't want to I, I was Those like intimidated. Cool also, Kiernan's like on my favorite show, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I'm fascinated by her as an actress, and, and Timo is just like this beautiful ray of light and, and, and a wonderful, they're just wonderful actors, but as people, they were they were very nice to us. <laughs> as old people, they were really sweet to us. Yeah. And made, made it easy to love them. Okay. Andrew, can you speak, um, I think the obvious comparison will probably be to the village. Um, uh, can you talk about how you tried to maybe distance yourself or maybe you were influenced at some point by that film? Yeah, it's interesting. I'd never, I, not until recently even thought about oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah, and I've only seen it once and I wasn't particularly fond of it. And, yeah. Um, 
I mean, it's, I mean, di it's different circumstances. Twist, yeah, yeah, but the twist to me was something that I just didn't really, um, it's not for me. I don't know if, um, I, I don't know how other people felt about yeah. it, but I, I actually like really enjoyed it until it twisted for me. I was like, it was really nice and had great atmosphere. And um, honestly, I haven't really thought about it until it had come up. And for me, there were other films that I was much more influenced by. And, huh. um, and we talked, I talked to Grant a lot about um, Night of the Hunter, and I talked to Autumn. RTP, a lot of, um, you know, like, I really like Carl Dreyer's uh, Ordit, which is an old German film, and um, really liked, uh, for the kids, just sort of the way the kids were treated and the way they were given maturity, Let the Right One In was a good guide for me, because obviously it also has sort of a, a fantasy element, yeah. and, but it treats it with such realism and um, such heart, and it sort of was just a path to explore a you know, a star cross love. That yeah. And that was a, a great guide for us. Can you talk a little about the rules that you set forth for, for this supernatural? Because at first it's not very evident, but they have to see where they're going mm -hmm. before they can actually go there. Yeah, I mean, that was, that's pretty much the extent of, of it for okay. us was that we, you know, that was it. They had to see to go, you know, they had to see it. Um, and I think there's a limit, and there was a scene shot where you know, they would get exhausted. They can't just do it forever and ever. And so it's like running, you know, yeah. or sprinting. Or, yeah. I would actually say it's more akin to sprinting. You know, you tire yeah. very quickly. Um, Is there a height limit, too? Not really. I mean, I think it would just I mean, get dangerous at a certain point. Like, Well, she find, it seems like it's harder for her to yeah. get over it. Is that because she's been doing it so much? Yeah, and I think it's, um, not being too spoilery, I don't yeah. think in, in the beginning of the film she would have had the ability to do the thing she does at the end of the That's film. That's very cool. Just become yeah. And also more daring and, yeah. um, you know, had to really overcome things within herself to have the bravery to do what she did. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the very end, I was like, this could be a comic book origin story. Very simply done, beautifully done. Um, I mean, and you said you were influenced by, you know, you love comic books and all that kind of stuff. I mean, would you be interested in maybe expanding this film further? Would you ever do a sequel, or? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on you know how well it's received and um, if there's an audience for it. I'm I'm interested in the world. I had a lot of fun working with everyone, and um, it'd be great. I mean, I love working with Kieran and Atima and Elizabeth and Grant. But, um, absolutely, I think there's some there's a lot of interesting space for me actually in sort of a prequel realm. Okay, um, but. Uh, you know, I, I entertain all ideas. Yeah, yeah. I, I invite anyone to send me fan <laughs> I'll send you <laughs> Yeah, it was interesting the, the history that they kind of explained at one point, and I was like, okay, I'm not sure, but yeah, I can see how that would yeah. be a, a different world. No, I think it's great. You know, for me, the, the origin stories in, in superhero films, they happen in like the first, the half of the first act. It's like 15 minutes, and yeah. that's all you get. You get like, oh, well, it's, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, because he got bit by a spider. Yeah. It's like the easiest little path yeah. to being a superhero yeah. or whatever. And then, okay, he's got to learn how to jump off buildings or whatever. But, like, <laughs> wouldn't it be much better if you could just expand <laughs> that over the course of a film? Like, to have it happen more realistically? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of a, a insane yeah. conceit to begin with. But, well, just um, to make it more believable, I, I think, too. Yeah. And I feel like I'd be more invested in him as a person. Yeah. That'd be cheaper. To make a, me a film like yes. yours. Less well, ours was the, about the budget of Spider-Man three, two, and one together. Yeah. We did pretty good with what it we It was had. under two billion. But <laughs> close. Eliz Elizabeth, can you speak a little bit about? Um, you've done TV, you've done major films, you've done indie films. About what? Uh, what may maybe you like to do the most, or what the big differences are for you? Uh, you know, I think like plays are the hardest thing, um, and it just is insane. Uh, and then, but I always kind of like also a character like this was I think was very hard for me because um, to make it feel believable and outside of normal everyday life, um, I really fell in love with uh, trying to figure that out and also the, the physical life of the character. But I, I think I'm always just who's the director? Like it okay. really just comes down to that and the and the material. And, um, and if it's like really terrifying and I'm dreading it, I think that's a good uh, thing to go on. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> this isn't going to be easy. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I feel scared and I want to grow up, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> um, what are your hopes for this film? I mean, beyond South by Southwest and Berlin? 
I mean, obviously, I want it to be seen by as many people as possible. And, um, you know, I really look forward to sharing it with more people and talking about it. And um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all you can hope for yeah. as a filmmaker. It hasn't been picked up. It hasn't yeah. Not yet. No, and we went to Berlin, but it wasn't really for sale until now. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, as a director and a director of photography. Um, are you okay with the? I mean, I mean, Mark Duplass spoke this morning on VO, a VOD and all that stuff. Are, are you more for theatrical releases? Or are you okay people seeing it in their homes? I'm totally game for anyone to consume it however they think is best. And um, you know, growing up where I did, I wouldn't have been able to. You know, I didn't. I was not able to see art films. I was not able to see yeah. foreign films. And if I had had that opportunity, I would have consumed everything. You know? Yeah. And to ignore someone like, who had a hunger for it and would have paid, you know, I would have spent all of my money from my high school job downloading stuff on iTunes and getting all yeah. the foreign movies that I'm reading about in Variety or whatever I was reading, you know, at the time. And, um, uh, so, yeah, I'm all about it. And, you know, I, in this film, it was certainly shot in a way that I don't know lends itself to the, you know, to like an iPhone. I hope you look an iPad, something a little a new bigger. Idea. Yeah, maybe the iPhone yeah. Plus or whatever. But, um, but yeah, totally anything. I'm all, I'm all for it. I, I'm 100% with Mark on that. Well, thank you guys so much for talking with me. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.